Good morning, it's the Daily Quiz, episode 87 on safety management. I'm your host, John Newquist. It's December 31st, 2025, New Year's Eve. It's in the CSP, ASP, SMP, S, C, H, S, T, and O, S, T. We got some new questions coming up, and this is the first one of the newer type of questions. Organizations reviewing candidates for a safety and health environmental leadership position. Several members of the hiring committee aren't familiar with the scope, responsibilities, and professional expectation of the safety, health, and environmental roles. Why is it important for you to educate individuals involved in this hiring decision about the roles of safety and health professionals within the organization? A, to ensure hiring decisions are based on a recognized body of knowledge, education, and professional competencies. B, to gain acknowledgement and approval from other safety and health professionals. C, to align the hiring practices strictly with national policy requirements. D, to meet the expectations or recognition from other local government agencies. And the answer is to ensure hiring decisions are based on a recognized body of knowledge, education, and professional competencies. This body of knowledge is that we're choosing people to sit there and have the knowledge and the depth of the experience that we need. We have to identify what kind of skills they need in safety and health. So it's an interesting topic that hiring decisions are now getting into. Safety professional wants to strengthen the organization's safety culture by encouraging open communication, honest feedback, and psychological safety among employees. Which tool would be most effective for gathering employee input and identifying opportunities to improve the safety culture? Offering pay raises to increase participation. B, administrating knowledge quizzes to test understanding. C, conducting employee safety culture surveys. And D, additional classroom safety training. This is commonly used by like the National Safety Council. They do a gap analysis where they identify what kind of gaps we have between the workers, the middle managers, and the senior leadership. And it's sometimes very eye-opening. Which management theorist developed a two-factor theory of job satisfaction, which distinguishes between hygiene factors and motivation? Not what you think hygiene factors are. Frederick Winslow Taylor, Elton Mayo, Ab Abraham Maslow, and Frederick Hertzberg even though I've got the answer down there. It is Hertzberg, hygiene factors versus motor buyer, and Maslow's in the hierarchy needs and Taylor scientific management, and Mayo is Hawthorne studies in human relations. You gotta know all four of them. You don't get these questions very often. In the old days, you'd get four or five of these leaders. Now, you're lucky to get just one. So Hertzberg, let's talk about this two-factor theory. You know, he proposes that job satisfaction and job dissatisfaction are determined by two different factors. Hygiene factors are what they call um, prevent dissatisfaction but don't create motivation. So nothing with industrial hygiene. The motivation increases job satisfaction and engagement. Improving hygiene factors alone will not improve performance or morale. We'll go in the next slide about hygiene factors. Motivation comes from the nature of the work itself, not just the environment and widely applied in safety, leadership, management, and organizational behaviors. So hygiene factors of things that prevent dissatisfaction is, you know, companies have policies and have good administration, quality of the supervisors, the work conditions are good, pay and benefits are strong, job security is there, interpersonal relationships are positive. If they're missing, you're going to have dissatisfaction. If they're present, it could be a neutral factor. You know, everybody can think of like, if we can't get along with the coworkers, it's going to be a lot of dissatisfaction. What's a motivator? What creates the actual satisfaction of the workers? Achievement, that they can try to go and set some goals and actually accomplish them. A lot of people like recognition. It could be in front of the public. It could be private one-on-one -on -one recognition. And, of course, they're given some responsibility and safety, not just doing busy work. And, of course, the work is meaningful, and there's some chance for growth and advancement. You have to remember, not everybody wants to be a supervisor. There are plenty of people I've known that work their whole career. They love going out in the field. They love doing audits. That's what you want. Put people in the right position for the jobs you have. Don't put them in there and make them a leader because you need somebody, because they're going to be miserable and your staff might be miserable. All right, and the application, you know, for the safety management is that 
you know, rules, PPE policies, these are hygiene factors, and then employee involvement, recognition, and leadership roles and opportunities are motivators. And a good safety con culture will have both of them. And that's why we tell people compliance alone, making everything good and meeting OSHA is not just a safe behavior. All right, we'll see you tomorrow in 2026.